Torture or not? Torture is the action or practice of inflicting severe pain or suffering on someone as a punishment or in order to force them to do or say something. Would it be cheaper or expensive to bring the guillotine back and leave the lethal injection behind? Us U.S. citizens have to pay taxes and those taxes go into prison, government help, hospitals, police, firefighters, and so on. But why should we pay for the people that are being sentenced to the lethal injection such as treason, espionage, murder, large-scale drug trafficking, or attempted murder of a witness, juror, or court officer in certain cases? Lethal injection was first proposed on January 17, 1888 by Julius Mount Blevier by a New York doctor. Blair's idea wasn't used until the late 20th century because it had a series of botched executions and the eventual rise of public disapproval in the electrocutions. How much does the lethal injection cost? The cost is $90. The lethal injection dosage contains 100 milligrams of pancronum bromine, also known as pavulo. It's a non depolarizing muscle relaxant, a paralytic agent that blocks the action of acetylene at the motor end plate of the neuromuscular junction. The typical dosage of pancronium bromine in the capital punishment by lethal injection is 0.2 milligrams and the duration of a paralysis is around 4 to 8 hours. The lethal injection also contains a dosage of 100 milliequivalent of potassium chloride. Potassium is an electrolyte 98% of which is intracellular. The 2% remaining outside the cell have great implications for cells that generate action potentials. Doctors prescribe potassium for patients when potassium levels in the blood are insufficient, called hypokalemia. The potassium can be given orally, which is the safest route, or it can be given intravenously. The usual intravenous dose is 10 to 20 milliequivalent per hour and it is given slowly since it takes time for the electrolytes to equilibrate into the cells. When used in state section, lethal injection, bolus potassium injections affect the electrical conduction of heart muscles. Lethal injection dosage of sodium thiopenthal 2 to 5 grams. It is also known as sodium pentanol. It's an ultra short action barbitute often used for anesthesia induction or for medical induced coma. The typical anesthesia induction dose is 0.35 grams. Loss of consciousness is induced within 30 to 45 seconds at the typical dose, while a 5 gram dose, 14 times of the normal dose, is likely to induce unconsciousness in 10 seconds. A full medical dose of theopethyl reaches the brain in about 30 seconds. This induces an unconditioned state 5 of to 20 minutes of injection, approximately 15% of the drug is in the brain, with the rest in the other parts of the body. So, if all of these drugs are being added, why call it a humane way to die? What can go wrong, you may ask? Anesthesia may not work. If a needle is not inserted properly when the anesthesia is administered, the inmate will feel every drug going into their system. Person remains awake. All these drugs being combined, but not properly anesthesia is used, the person will feel each drug. Feeling suffocation, if they don't pull enough anesthesia, the patient will feel like drowning, but want to show any physical reaction of pain due to paralytic drugs. Bane being hard to find. 
If they try multiple times to find a vein to put the IV catheter, the catheter will be inserted into the growing vein, a jugular vein in the neck, or subclavian vein. And people still call this a humane way to die? Why do we keep cleaning them with alcohol wipes or why not use the same needle on each person? Either way, they will die. The inmates see the lethal injection as a peaceful, humane, and calm way to leave this place after the crime they have sentenced for. They don't respect the system because they know they have a peaceful way to leave without suffering. But why take the glutatin away and put a humane way to die? King Louis XVI was sentenced to death by the guillotine after he found to have been conspiring with the other countries and engaging in counter-revolutionary acts. Victims of the guillotine The first person to be executed was Nicolas Jactis Pelletier. He was found guilty of treason and then later executed. Also, nine months later, the former queen of France, Marine Antoinette, was also executed with the guillotine. She even stepped on the executioner's feet and apologized. Maximilien Robespierre, July 28, 1794. He was an influential leader of the revolution. Ironically, he was a vehement proponent of the guillotine and mastermind of the reign of terror. Madame Dubarry, December 8, 1793, Louis XV's mistress and Mary Antoinette's enemy. She enchanted the elderly king and many of his courtiers with her bold, outrageous behavior. She did not climb the steps to the scaffold she had to be carried. George Danton, April 5, 1794, a orator and leader of the revolution, Robespierre's rival, as Danton rode by in his red painted tumbrel, he pointed to Robespierre's shuttered window and shouted, You're next. You will follow me. He was correct. Robespierre died a few months later. The youngest person to be executed by the guillotine was only 14 years old and the oldest was 92 years old. Algen Waitman was the last person to be executed by the guillotine. Their last beheading was on the 10th of September 1977. The guillotine was stopped because people looked at it as inhuman. They made people watch it and there was a lot of blood so they thought it was disgusting. Also, it had been used in abundance during the French Revolution and has become the symbol of a terror regime. September 1881, France outlawed capital punishments and abandoned the U.S. of the guillotine. Apart from the fact that from a humane point of view, the death penalty itself is unacceptable, the guillotine is a quick and painless way to die, much better than electricity executing or poisoning someone to death by all means. The guillotine was built by a doctor of Lyme, Dr. Joseph Ignace Guillotine, on 1789. The guillotine consists of a wooden frame with an angled blade that runs along grooves. After the executioner raises the weighted blade with a rope, the condemned is placed on a platform with his or her head in a round wooden frame called a lunette. The executioner Let's go of the rope, allowing the blade to drop, and in some moment, they would put a basket for the head in to drop in there. They may say that after decapitation, your brain still works, but science shows that the brain needs oxygen. The brain and all the structures it supplies need oxygen to function. The brain accounts for 20% of all oxygen used in the body. Some Fun facts about the guillotine is that if they don't sharpen the blade before decapitating someone, they would have to drop the blade and it would just go halfway and the person being decapitated will still feel everything and see everything and will have to wait for the blade to be dropped once again for the head to be chopped off. So, should we bring the guillotine back or keep wasting money on the lethal injection? <laughs>